Hi everyone, it's Emily again. In this video, we're going to be talking about the literature review. Literature reviews usually build from an annotated bibliography just as they do for this assignment that you have. They're also going to be used by your next class, um, the second course in the series for program planning and evaluation. So it's doubly important that you understand what is a literature review, its purpose, and how to write one. So in this video, I'll talk about what is a literature review, different kinds of literature reviews with some examples, and offer some tips for organizing and writing literature reviews. So what is this thing, a literature review? Well, a literature review can be defined by what it does. It offers background research and a topic overview. So it provides the context for your research question. It usually provides an analysis of themes and major theories related to your research topic. It identifies gaps in knowledge. And it shows how your research fits into what is already known. Probably the most important is this identifying gaps in knowledge. In the future, in your careers, a literature review can really frame as to why research that you're going to do or a project should be funded. If it hasn't been done before, it means that you can prove its usefulness and need. So there are different types of literature reviews. In your studies, you've probably heard of um, systematic reviews or meta-analyses. Those are kinds of literature reviews. But literature reviews are also quite frequently just the introduction to a research article. You may not even have known you've been reading a literature review before. Sometimes it's called introduction. Sometimes it's called literature review. You just have to kind of feel out what it's doing. Here's an example of just an article's introduction that is serving as a literature review. This is only three paragraphs of a research article, not even a whole page. You'll notice that it's sprinkled with a lot of citations and it really forms the background for this particular research about food deserts and food availability. This is an example of a standalone literature review. It doesn't show me that it's an actual standalone literature review, but I know it is one. One of the reasons I know is that it was published in the Annual Review of Public Health. That's a journal that only publishes reviews. And here's another example of how you can tell whether an article is a literature review or not in a database record. You'll notice that this particular article has the phrase, a review of the literature in its title. Also notice that in the abstract, the research methodology highlighted is that the authors performed a literature review and a meta-analysis, another kind of literature review. So what are some tips for organizing and writing? Well, here's one from my personal experience. I was writing a standalone literature review and I really needed to track the articles I was using. I created a spreadsheet. My spreadsheet included a column for citations and then the top columns were questions I was asking of the literature as a whole. My particular topic was about peer review and transparency in peer review. You'll notice that I asked very specific questions related to my research topic about the articles themselves. Then I offered myself a place where I could answer those questions in the spreadsheet. This is a great way to organize it. The other tip I have for you is that when you're doing some writing, you should probably try and see if you can use the PSU Writing Center's resources. If you're a student in person and on campus, you can always make an appointment. Otherwise, there are a lot of online resources for you that they offer. As you get going with your literature reviews, please don't hesitate to be in touch and ask a librarian.